In this video, we are going to take a broad look on the functions of the operating system. When we store our programs, they are stored on non-volatile storage like the disk and whenever we want to execute them, they will be loaded by the operating system into the main memory or the RAM. This program in execution is now referred to as a process. So as long as it was in the secondary storage, it was a program, but now when it has been loaded into the RAM for execution, it is referred to as a process. So one of the major tasks of the operating system is process management. So what exactly is done by the OS in process management? Creation and deletion of the processes. So whenever a process is created, many data structures are associated with that process. So that would account for the creation of that process. Once the process has finished its execution, the resources will be taken away from it and also all the uh, data structures which are associated with it. And that would lead to the deletion of the process. Once the process is gone to the main memory, CPU has to be allocated to it. So there would be many processes in the RAM and a number of processes would be available in the main memory and these are all processes which are waiting for the resources like CPU. So one of the tasks of the operating system is to schedule the process on the CPU. Each application will be given the CPU in a fair manner. If the process has gone for some input output or is waiting for some event to take place, the process will be suspended. So that part of suspension and resuming the process again that is also done by the OS. Then the OS also provides the mechanisms for process synchronization. Suppose there is a resource and two processes wants to use the same resource. It could be an input output device or suppose two processes want to use the same resource, then how should they be synchronized? Even they might be wanting to access common data sections also. So the process for uh, mechanism for process synchronization is also provided by the OS. If two processes they want to communicate with each other, then the OS will provide some mechanism for inter-process communication also. So as told in the previous slide, CPU scheduling is also one of the major tasks of the OS. If multiple processors want to use the CPU for execution, the operating system makes sure that they are scheduled in a manner that each application is given some share or some CPU time. So if there are several processes which are ready to run, the system will choose which process will run next based on some scheduling algorithm. Another task of the OS is memory management. We know that the main memory is limited. It could be limited in size and each process would require the uh, memory blocks for keeping its text or data. Now OS will allocate few blocks to each process. So suppose this block is allocated to the browser, another so all the green blocks, suppose they are referring to blocks which are allocated to the browser, then there are certain point blocks which are allocated to the PowerPoint application and then one block which is allocated to the text editor. So it is the job of the operating system to figure out where, how many blocks have to be allocated to each application. So it will keep a record of the memory blocks being used and the process which is using that particular block. So allocation and deallocation de of the memory space is also a function of the OS. Then also deciding which process and data is to be moved in and out of memory that is also part of the OS functions. Virtual memory 
is managed by the operating system. You can see any of my previous videos on virtual memory in the computer organization and architecture playlist. Now the operating system provides a uniform logical view of information storage and this storage unit is referred to as a file. So this information storage is the view that is provided by the operating system to the user. So the OS is abstracting the physical properties of the storage device of the file. So what the OS sees is the file system or the files. What the users see, they see the files. They do not see the nitty gritties of the physical storage device on which these files are stored on. Now the OS will also map the file onto the physical media and access these files via the storage device. So each of these files might be stored on some storage device. So it is the job of the operating system in case a user wants to access a particular file, the OS will make sure to access that particular file on from the storage. So what is the file system management then? So the file system management now refers to creation and deletion of files. So the, if the user wants to store any information, the creation of file would be the task of the OS. It also creates and deletes directories to organize the files. So a number of files may be put in a directory and there could be a tree-like structure to organize the files. There would be primitives for manipulating files and directories to uh, change their location, to change their access, con uh, access. So the OS is responsible for all these primitives. The OS also maps the files onto the mass storage and also keep track of backing these files. Now comes the task of the storage manage management. So whenever we have secondary storage like the disk, the OS is responsible for taking care of the storage management. So it will take care of mounting. Mounting means that now the disk is available to the operating system and the operating system can access the file system on the disk and now it can read and write on the files which are available on the disk. So this is referred to as the mounting. Unmounting is when we want to disassociate any particular storage from the system. The OS will also keep track of the free space which is available on the disk. It will allocate storage to different files on the disk. If there are a number of processes which want to access the disk, so suppose there are two processes which want to access the disk, they have sent in requests for certain files, then it is the job of the operating system to take care of the disk scheduling. So each request will be scheduled in a particular manner depending upon the algorithm. The partitioning of the disk into various sec sections would also be taken care of by the OS. The protection of the disk is also part of the OS task. Now after the storage management, we talk about input output management. So we may have input devices like keyboard or joysticks or a mouse. We may have output devices like the monitor or the printer. So the OS it hides the distinctness of the hardware devices from the user. Each device over here is unique. So the operating system, it hides the different peculiarities of this, these devices from the user. It has, each device has a device driver which knows the uniqueness of that particular device and the OS now will interact with the device driver to access that particular device. So the OS is providing the device driver interface to the users for accessing the devices. The OS also takes care of protection and security of the system. It has to ensure that the resources can be operated on 
by only those processes that have proper authorization from the operating system. So, protection refers to controlling the access of the processors or the users to the resources which are defined by the computer system. So, only those processes which have been authorized by the OS to access a particular resource, only those resource can be accessed by that particular process. Now, a system can have adequate protection, but it can still be vulnerable to failures or attacks. So, now it has the OS has to maintain the security of the system and defend it from external and internal attacks. So, these are the broad functions of the operating system and we will discuss each of them later in other uh, successive videos.